And you will know that our case count has increased over the last 12 hours. Uh, I'm sure that by the time you went to bed, you knew that when uh, you were going to wake up, you will see an increment of some 287, and that's the number. Now, what does it mean? Because we've been uh, within this period of uh, the pandemic and efforts by government to make sure we are in a position to alleviate our plight. But of course, what ne it needs to be done is the case management. But ultimately, how will population, its management, be able to help us in all this? And even post-coronavirus, what should we be thinking about when it comes to our population, its management? Somebody who is very much used to a population that is clustered in our daily habitation, because I grew up in Ashaima, so <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's something I'm very much used to. But in related issues of social distancing and all the things that we need to maintain within this period, how do we relate that to the health of our country? We decided to invite into the studio Executive Director for the National Population Council, Dr. Leticia Apia. Adelaide Leticia Apia is a medical doctor by profession, also holds uh, a PhD, and so knows her stuff. Good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, and thanks for having me, Roland. No, great. Now, uh, what have so far been your observations about uh, uh, the surge in the cases of coronavirus in Ghana? how it started, and so far what we've been doing by way of the case management. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. We all know how it started with, uh, I think, two cases, and here we are with uh, 285 cases. And the government is doing a lot in this regard, providing us with the PPEs, giving us water supply, uh, putting some people in shelter and feeding them. I think we're really doing the best that we can. But uh, we really need to look at the, I think that this COVID fight is actually on two fronts, the community front and the facility front. Mm. And the facility front is where we have the PPEs and the ventilators and all that for, for people. But we actually also have ventilators and PPEs in the community that we're really not uh, looking at and appreciating. Mm. This COVID pandemic, for me, tells us something. We really need to understand the risk so that we can appreciate our responsibilities. Mm. We, we have to know that this pandemic, nobody is immune because we've not been vaccinated. And so it is critical that we appreciate that risk that we all face because we're just not immune. We don't have issues with other uh, communicable diseases such as TB and the rest because we have immunizations. But this, we do not have immunization against the COVID. And that should be something for us to really think about. As a population, how does that put us uh, at risk? And I'm asking this question knowing or for you to take a look at uh, the demographics in terms of the segmentation, the way we live, our access to health care, our access to other uh, amenities within the country or society that we live in? Yeah, before I even answer that, let me go back a little, because this COVID is, is a bit different. The reason why COVID is different is that the, the fight against COVID is, is really an individual fight for the good of community. By that, the fight is actually your immune system trying to fight a virus that nobody uh, has been exposed to. That is what immunization would have done. Immunization would have given us the herd immunity so that when we get COVID, we do not get sick or have a very severe illness. But because we don't have immunity, so we all like soldiers against the virus. That is why it is important that we look at social distancing as a PPE in the community. Social distancing is really one of our PPEs in the community so that if we should have the virus, we fight the virus alone, and if you do not have the virus, you stay away from the virus till we have vaccines. Now, what do we have as a, as a country? You're talking about the demographics. Mm. It is important that we use data for decision making. If you look at the 2010 census, for instance, and you look at it's an indicator such as the population density, 
2010, the population density in Ghana was about 103 per uh, square kilometer. But now it will be about 135 or 137 because, of course, it will be higher. You look at a place like uh, Ghana, I mean Greater Accra, the population density in 2000, the 2000 census, was about 800 and something kilometers square, persons per kilometer square. Mm. 2010 census is about 1,300 persons per kilometer square. Now you look at a place like AME, Accra Metro. Accra Metro population density is over 10,000 persons per kilometer square. And then you go to a place like KME. KME is about 8,000, almost 9,000 uh, persons per kilometer square. That's 2010 data. We're not talking about 2020 because we're not there yet. This virus uses social distancing because we do not have the immunity. That is what we should really appreciate. Is the immunity now well, that is protecting us? Yes. So it is important that we appreciate the risk so that we can really understand our responsibility in social distancing. Look at a place like uh, New York. Why is it ravaging New York? The population density in New York is the same, is similar to population density in Accra Metro. It's about 10,000 and above. Take a place like Sweden, for instance. They have not done lockdown. Their population density is about 25 persons per square, square kilometer. kilometer. Wow. So in their calmness, they are practicing social distancing. In their normal state, they are practicing social distancing. Mi and that is closest, the, what we have closest in Ghana is Upper West, where the population density is about 35 uh, persons per kilometer square. So those indicators are not just indicators that statistical service just collects for collecting sick, but it should guide us in our planning. Okay. So now that we know that areas like Sukura, Fadama, Newtown, uh, you go to Komase, you, <laughs> you, you, a doom, uh, and all that. Um, the, the density uh, will, will be a replication of what we have in Accra. What, how would that have translated, or is that translating in the message of social distancing within this period? The issue is that, Roland, the Bible says that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The virus transmits when we are in close contact with each other. So for us to break transmission, we have to stay apart. This is what we have currently as a country. But the virus does not really care what you have as a country. The virus is just interested in propagating itself when you are close together. When you stay apart, you fight the virus alone. And if you're able to defeat the virus, we, we, we say you are a hero on our behalf, and that's it. So we we'll have to find ways of social distancing if we want to really uh, be ahead of the virus. That's not possible. When you take La Paz, for example, you go to the communities, you just get out of your hallway, you are in the hallway of uh, a neighbor in a compound house. Uh, how's that possible? Well, it has to be possible if we want to survive. If we really want to survive as a community, as a nation, then that should be possible. And that is why we have to be creative. And that's why we have to think probably outside the bus. You know, we have the military, they go for camping, and they can go for camping for weeks. How do they do that? We have NADMO in terms of emergency, and this is emergency. So how do we help ourselves to disperse? We have empty spaces, we have big churches, we have schools, we have parks. So for some time, how do we disperse so that the, the virus bends itself out? The issue is that what would happen? Okay, so now we are clustered together. We cannot do social distancing now. If we get 10,000 cases, assuming we have 10,000 positive cases, which of course I hope we shouldn't have, what, what are we going to do? We're still going to socially isolate them. We still have to go through the social isolation. So why don't we think of how to do it now? Because for me, the treatment for or, or, or being ahead or curbing COVID-19 is PPE, social isolation, ventilations, and then your immune system. And that is what you really have. What are the ventilators doing? The ventilators are only helping you to breathe so that your immune system still fights. That is what ventilators do. And you already have ventilators. You have natural ventilators. That's your nose. And you have natural oxygen. That's the air you have. 
and the PPE is the distance you are keeping. And so we have to find creative ways of, of, of making sure that we, we, we appreciate the responsibility of social distancing. That is how the virus operates. You cannot change how the virus operates, but we can change our response to the virus. Because for us, I think that we are the only creatures on Earth uh, that, that learn and changes. Viruses don't change, trees don't change, but human beings should change so that we can survive. So we have to really focus on the social distancing. Social distancing is really the mainstay of the COVID. Look at it. They are asking us to social distance in the community on our own. Mm -hmm. Then if you get the virus and you, you have symptoms, you go to the facility. And in the facility, you're still in isolation, which is still social distancing away from people. And when you become critically ill and they take you to ICU, they still do social distancing there because the health workers will wear the PPEs and then you are just with your uh, ventilator or your oxygen. So social distancing you cannot really run away from. It's not just in the community, but the whole leg of COVID uh, uh, treatment. I mean, treatment is social distancing. Mm. Social distancing, PP, uh, uh, oxygen or ventilators, and then your immune system. Just these three. Is what you, you rely on. If you take a look at what currently is transpiring under uh, the lockdown, we have pushed everybody from the streets and, and we're all in our homes. Is it that we haven't preached enough the, pro, the proactiveness of social distancing, knowing that we still have communities that in themselves, because of the way they've been built, they've been organized, uh, spacing is not one of the things that is on our side. Well, that is why we should think, and for me, that is why statistical service, for me, is the most important uh, organization in our country, or it should be in any country, because that's where you get the data. The statistical service is really like your lab, the lab for your lab results. And if you, you really want health, like we all do, we go to the medical uh, checkup, you get your lab results. The doctor reads it and tells you that your HB is low, your BP is high, your this is that, and corrects it. That is what statistical service was supposed to, to be doing for us. So we look at our population density in 2000, which was about 800 uh, kilometers square. Is that what we want? The normal uh, 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 population density they talk about is about 100. Because if it's 100, then if you have to practice social distancing, it is easy. If there's a communicable disease that they don't have a cure or a vaccine, the transmission is easy. There's good ventilation. You can sleep well for good health. That is why we have the, those indicators. And so we really need to be working with, uh, we have to be data driven and, 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 and use data for decision making. Uh, uh, clearly, if you watch people and the way they move around, even under this lockdown, it, it looks like we're not observing the message of social distancing. Even though we seem to be observing the guideline rules in a greater percentage for the lockdown. Yes, because, because you see, they said we should go home. Why should we go home and what should we do when we are in the house? That has not come out very clearly. So you go home not to crowd. You go home to take care of yourself because, you see, like I'm saying, the, 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 the virus attacks your immune system and we don't have any specific immunity against this. So you go home as a soldier to prepare. You go home to social distance so that if you have the virus, you should love your neighbors enough not to transmit to them, and even love yourself enough not to transmit to them, because we don't even know whether the virus, you can have a reinfection. So that is one. You go home to social distance. You go home to build your immunity. How do you build your immunity? You have to eat well. You have to sleep well. You have to laugh. You have to play some games. And you have to listen to less of, of, uh, of negative information, because the immune system, that is how you build it. So you have to build your immune system, you have to do the social distancing at home, and we should all understand the risk that we have. The risk is that we are not immune against this virus. That is why it is spreading and it is killing so many people. And for me, the COVID should, should show us the power of science and the power of God. You know, Science, formerly, it was killing a lot of, uh, uh, when we didn't have polio vaccine, a lot of people were dying from, from polio. But we have been so privileged to take advantage of science, we have not seen anything like this before. So that is where we are. We don't have immunity against the virus. And the virus, is a, it's really personal battles for, 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 
for national good. And so we have to really boost our immunity and make sure that we do the social distancing for our good and the good of our neighbors and the nation. And for me, it is a sign of being a citizen. If we have to be citizens, then we have to stand for our nation and we have to stand apart to stand together as a country to fight COVID-19. There's a publication in the Medical News Journal it, it, called the Medical News Today. And in its uh, March 25 uh, publication, it says that a new study taking into account 25,961 people confirmed that a method of predicting the virus transmission is a pattern in which people are asymptomatic in the transmission process. And it says that the virus is aggressive in spreading when people don't stay apart. Now, in our case, we have people not staying apart. If they're now together, how apart should they also be at that point in time? You know, the, the, the reason why this virus is very dangerous is that uh, I think a quarter of the, uh, the people who have the disease is asymptomatic. And then it's also uh, through, I mean, uh, droplets and aerosols now that we know, you know. So that is why it makes it uh, a, a very dangerous uh, virus, you know. The issue is that the virus has its mode of transmission. Luckily, scientists have told us the mode of transmission of the virus. And so if we want to break the virus, the transmission, the choice is really ours to do what we need to do. That is where the learning comes in. That is where change comes in. That is why we have to change some of our habits. The virus is not going to say that because you are clustered and because you don't have anywhere to go, uh, I'm going to, 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 to spare you. Ignorance will kill us more than anything else. And so we have to make sure that this is what the, we need to do to get ourselves saved. The issue is, going forward, what do we do so that in case there's a situation like this, even if not us, uh, 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 the next generation, how will they manage it? Because I know that if you look at the, 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 the Spanish flu, for instance, it mm. killed so many people. Yes, it did. And we are benefiting from that, from, from, from the loss of lives at that time. You know. So how are we going to make sure that uh, people coming after us are not going to go through what we're going through. Because clustering in, 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 in human uh, development is not the best for, for, for healthy living. That is the fact. And so we have to make sure that we take decisions that will inure to the benefit of everybody. COVID-19 aff affects everybody. It does not care who you are or where you live as long as you come into contact with somebody who has the virus, you get infected. And so we really have to look at that. As for social distancing, we have to find all innovative and creative ways of socially distancing. Because we can either do it ourselves or we'll be forced to do it if we get the disease. Mild one, we we'll have to do it ourselves. If you are severely ill, you will be socially distanced in a bed for 24 hours on a ventilator. So the choice is really ours. And I think that the first choice is the easiest one to try and do social distancing in the communities because we do not have immunity. You can have immunity two ways. You either do vaccination or you get the disease. The disease, you don't know how it will progress. And so we have to avoid catching the disease and keep ourselves away from ourselves till the vaccine is, is, is developed. And then we can be immunized and we can go back to our normal lives. Mm. And, and you made mention of parks, uh, open places, uh, open places uh, check, uh, churches and all that. So meaning what? If, let's say, uh, I live in Fadama, then the mocks, uh, I should ha they should keep it open and have 10 people uh, in the mocks. So I, I, I don't get you all. Well, I'm, the, I'm, parks? the issue is that, I, I, you see, you have to let people be responsible and people be in charge. Let us understand the risk that we all face and what we need to do. The risk is that, number one, we don't have immunity. Number two, the disease is going to transmit if we are closely packed together. So the, the, the various religious uh, rulers and traditional authorities and the chief imams, this is the situation. This is the risk that we face. How do we manage in our community in such a way that we can 
stay apart. How do we, you know, hand washing, the, all the, the hand sanitizers, it's all part of social distancing. You are distancing yourself away from the, from the virus, mm. you know. Talking, not talking loudly, is keeping yourself away from the virus. The mask is keeping yourself away from the virus. So everything we're doing is really part of social distancing. So social distancing is one, or probably physical distancing, not social distancing, because we still need to associate uh, with one another, even if it's through the mobile phone. So we have to let our traditional rulers know that this is what we have at stake. They can have innovative ways of letting people know that this is important and this is what we have to adhere to. We cannot give everybody solutions. Ghanaians are empowered enough and knowledgeable enough to have the solutions when they are giving the reason why they should do this. But if they're not giving the reason why and you just don't want to see me on the street, then I go into my house and whatever I do, that is, 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 is not your business because I'm home. But that should not be the focus of this. Now, we do know that we're focusing on this because the, keep, the cases keep rising. But, yes. uh, for example, if you live in a community where um, the, the socialization is very high, at uh, the barbering shop, you have a number of people uh, sitting by the orange cellar chatting, people being under the tree to play drafts, dummy. You know dummy? Yes. Okay. And, and all that. Um, W w a, at that point in time, what should they be doing? Should they be wearing their masks before they do the interaction, etc.? Well, the issue is that, you see, now we don't have a lot of test kits because uh, 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 our bosses are also struggling. And for me, that is the more reason why... And if you talk about bosses, you mean the developed countries? The developed countries. That is the more reason why we should learn to develop sustainably. And for me, that is where the sustainable development goals are so important that we have to now look at it. So we don't have enough test kits. If we test the people, what are we going to do? We are going to isolate them. <laughs> that is it. So if we don't have en enough test kits, then I think it is good for us to think that I have it, you have it, everybody has it, so that we isolate ourselves. Because if we test and we have it, we're still going to be isolated. And now we don't have enough test kits. So let's assume that we all have it. It will even bring the stigma down so that they are not stigmatized. I had uh, one of uh, the, the volunteers was sacked from uh, his home because he, he went to contact Trace. He came back and the elderly man who's about 70 said, no, you have gone to contact Trace. And I have heard that old people get it more than young people, so you uh, leave my house. You know? So we all have to know that we are in this together and this is the issue. If we test and you are positive, what do you do? You will isolate. If you isolate and you don't have it, what do you do? Mm. You will not have it. Mm. So I think the social distancing and, and, and the physical distancing should really be hammered on and let us know that we are doing this for ourselves and for those we, we love and for the good of the nation because there is no herd immunity. We do not have a herd immunity, and that should be very clear on us. Yeah. Prior to this, we would had SARS, H1N1, and, and, and all of them. Now, going forward... Uh, we're tackling this and um, uh, such uh, advice uh, from your outfit, for example, and you uh, also will come in handy. But going forward, how then is population planning and the data that we acquire from it sh uh, should be integral in the health of the population and managing the health care of the country? Yeah, thank you so much. You see, the Bible talks about you don't know when the end days are coming, so you have to be prepared all the time. Now, COVID has come, and it's really depending on our immune system that we have built proud to this to help us fight. So it is important that we take the quality of life of individuals as very important and as the most important commodity in the country. Now, our education is down, our economy is down, it's just health. So we have to appreciate the fact that health is the most important and the necessary precondition to everything. So, yes, the numbers, but the quality of life should be our paramount. We should not just have children that we cannot take care of. Because if you're talking about healthy living, we have about a quarter of our children being malnourished. We have a lot of Ghanaians being stunted which is not good for cognitive and physical development and obviously not good for your immune system. So we should always plan, prepare, so that if we have a battle that our immune system has to fight, it will be ready to fight. If we also have a battle that our health system has to fight, 
then it will also stand ready to fight. We should have a, a development that appreciates the, 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 the necessities of, of life. For instance, water. If, when you go to CNN or BC, uh, BBC, nobody's talking about water. Because water is a commodity that is a non-negotiable commodity. Everybody has water. Everybody has toilet. And so we really have to look at that and put the human being central. We have to put the human being as the most important uh, person in the in in country yeah. and focus on our development, both physical, mental, and everything. Well, thank you for this great education. And uh, all of us, uh, hopefully, we've picked a word or two from this. And ultimately, that also will guide policymakers and all of us. Because uh, before the policy trickles down, you should have enough information to be able to make the decisions at your, at your level. Live, as I've borrowed from uh, Dr. Uh, Adelaide Letitia Pia, is full of choices. It's all about choices. And the choices we make are always critical to how well we live, how healthy we live or not. Thank you very much, Executive Director, the National Population Council, Dr. Adelaide Letitia Pia, joining us and um, again drumming home the need for population uh, its management and the data from it to be used in what we're managing in relation to coronavirus, the pandemic, it spread the cases we have in our country. But look, I tell you, uh, we're also going to have a conversation about how we need to have a better mental health in this time. When you wake up and we tell you the case numbers in Ghana have increased over a 12-hour period from 214 to 287, what do you think? It puts a lot of stress uh, on you mentally. Now, how do you manage all that? Um, elsewhere in the UK and the US, uh, battery cases uh, among couples, divorce rates, uh, you know, complaints leading to threats of divorce, etc., uh, have increased in numbers. It's all because people who apparently were not socializing 12 hours a day on, on a physical level now will have to live under the same roof. Now, there's even no, not enough food, or what you hoarded a week ago has finished. How do you put yourself in a better mental state? And that's what we want to talk about. We will speak to a consultant psychiatrist with the Ankaful Psychiatry Hospital. And I tell you, we have uh, some great lessons to learn there. How are we able to manage? We also would want to tell you about how we need to preserve food. But nationally, how is the national uh, buffer stock uh, company also doing as far as that is concerned uh, national buffer stock food company uh, how are they doing that in that regard and how the national blend bank is also managing all this all this right after this